Hello and welcome. This is Hless John teaching another Android Studio related tutorial uh, dealing with the subject of Guinea Motion. I have a problem. I can't get Guinea Motion to work properly. So after a great deal of effort, I found a way to to get it to work. And this tutorial is how I did that, so that anyone out there who has the same exact problem as I was having could get your Guinea Motion to work with Android Studio. I'll show you my problem. I eventually got the Oracle VM virtual box to work and the reason I was able to do that was because I went into here and somehow magically <laughs> um, I went to settings system and for me I enabled the EFI and special OS's only and for me that worked so that is not going to be a fix-all for everybody this is not a virtual uh, VM virtual box manager how to tutorial this you have to have running in advance this is not a tutorial on the VM box this is how to get your Guinea motion up and I've had so many problems trying to get it to run uh, with Android studio that it's not even funny I don't even use this button here anymore I have this installed mine won't work because uh, I've messed with it so, so much and I and I just haven't got around to uh, getting this fixed. What I'm going to show you to, how to do is how to get this to run on not that on this. What you're going to end up doing is create and start your own Guinea Motion uh, virtual uh, phone and then when you run this and then you'll see here connected devices your phone will be here right here this is connected devices and this is with it running you'll be able to click here and then click OK and then it will run on your Genymede emulator now that is the workaround fix that I've got basically what you're gonna do you're gonna install VM VirtualBox get it running and then you're gonna get Genymotion motion running so that you have an actual emulator running before you go into Android and once you get into Android and then you hit play, it will simply choose this as your emulator rather than either a phone that's plugged in, which is actually faster, or um, what I believe to be, I don't like their, their emulator that's, that comes with this, especially with uh, the N. But that's largely because of my computer. My computer is old and slow. And for that reason, uh, their emulator is not gonna run very fast on my, on my computer. Uh, the Guinea Motion runs a lot faster, a lot smoother, uh, and I really like it compared to uh, what's provided with Android Studio. What do you need? You need A, to go to Guinea Motion, go to their page and find the download Guinea Motion page. And this is, I'm working with version 2.7.2. This is the version that I, I downloaded and installed. You have to register for the website in order to use their product it's free but you have to have that login and register in order for this whole thing to work so you need to download for Windows I downloaded with the virtual box uh, you can also do without the virtual box and then go to the Oracle site and find uh, the VM box the VM virtual box manager independently and get a separate copy uh, really doesn't matter as long as you get a VM virtual box working now when you get the Oracle VM virtual box manager up and operating you can test it to see if it works by opening one of your boxes and that's what mine looks like when it and opens and operates and again there's a lot of help out there with issues with people who can't even get their shell to open which was my major problem and what I found was for me was that one check for OS's so I'm gonna get out of here that was just to demonstrate that it does work okay now after you've got Guinea motion installed uh, I'm gonna show you what happens with mine I double click on it it goes to virtualization engine not found plugin loaded abort it says so right here It'll go through all these generating logs and then it'll come up with this unable to uh, load VirtualBox engine. I have no idea what's causing this. I've tried many, many different ways to fix this. None of them work. 
none of them work so here's what I did so you need to open this differently you go to here right click run as administrator and I'm running on Windows 10 yes and for some reason it opens totally different when you're operating from the right click run as administrator so this menu comes up for me get animation for personal use start or add you will not have or you should not have a virtual device here when you start user not authenticated down here at the bottom that's important what you do is you go add and then you have to sign in now that sign in that you use to sign into their website that's what you use here so you sign in put your username and password this new window will pop up and then it will give you a select a new device list choose from whatever phone you want to use you can install as many as you like uh, to use later and to test in different looks and modes I am going to use uh, the Nexus 4 so that's what I did I, I just filtered for the Nexus 4 and I installed I believe the Appy 22 because that was the most the, the newest version that they had and then I installed it when you click your phone and click next uh, it'll give you this little spiel please check the virtual device and custom phone but you know your virtual device operates because you've already got it installed so this is gonna work uh, it works for me now there may be a, some people out there that this still won't work for uh, but if you've got a VM box that's operating this should not be an issue and then when you click next your list of virtual devices are present so in order to get this to work in here I'm actually gonna close out of here so we can start without it operating uh, I'm gonna start the phone start it initializes and uh, it, it takes about a minute on my computer so I'm gonna cut to the end and there it's it's up, up and operating and this is actually an emulator you you can use the emulator for all kinds of different things really but for our purposes, I'm going to be using it for Android Studio. So starting up Android Studio, I'm using the Purple Worm uh, as my example. I've got it loaded and running. It, it looks great. Um, so now I'm just going to do it like I would normally do it. I'll go up here to run the emulator. Unknown Google Nexus connected device. It treats this as a connected device. So I'm going to use selection for future uses. Click OK. Again, it takes a minute for it to roll up. My computer is slow. There you have it. Turn the worm. Worm is turned. The worm is turned. And this, I think, is a lot better than the native emulator that comes with Android. And I'll prove that by running it here in a second. Uh, this, I mean, I got no problems with this. Let's uh, get out of here. Go into... <laughs> the purple worm turn the worm so that I exited entered ran it no problems now let me look at the same computer running on the native Android uh, emulator okay here's on the Android version click so much slower click so much slower I, I don't understand it's supposed to be much much faster in this version but it's not so let's get out of here, click, close, click, five, really? So that's why I like the emulator better. It's at least twice as fast as this. Uh, and you know, this works, it does, it, it, it's great. So if you can't get the, the, the Gen Emotion to work, this is fine, this will work great. That's how you get Gen Emotion to operate and be used using it as an external phone phone source uh, rather than a plug-in so thank you for joining me uh, don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you around